Welcome back to Radio Northampton, everyone. I'm John Savastano, your host, and it's good to be back on the air. And what better a way to return to the air with our most special guest, our long-term guest, Joe Manzi from the Town of Northampton Recreation Department. Joe, how are you today? Doing very well, John. Thank you very much for having me and for allowing me to come back and for that very gracious introduction. Well, Joe, speaking of the uh, longevity, uh, we have a little quiz question, and uh, I want you to hold your thoughts on this and everyone at home. We'll give you the answer at the end of the show, but you've been here and have made the most appearances on Radio Northampton. So it got me thinking earlier. I said, uh, you know, let me Google most appearances on the Johnny Carson show. Who had the most appearances on Johnny's show? I have the answer. And um, you can very well take a, a guess later on, and then we'll give you the answer as to who was the all-time uh, guest on the Johnny Carson Show. But anyway, Joe, um, you know, we know the activities. We know what's going on. You're the face of recreation like no one's ever seen in this town before. What a face. But let's find out a little bit more about joe manzi you know how you get started into this thing and what, what's the personal end of uh the joe show yeah well um thank you for asking that i mean i've pretty much started in high school i mean always a love of athletics um and that and recreation and and started actually um coaching in high school and then that's everything just kind of connected and kept going to that and, and eventually i I really had a balance between working in the recreation field and, and several different departments in several different towns and also the mental health field where I worked for the Odyssey House in New Hampshire for almost 10 years. And I think that was really key because it helped me transition from a straight sports, which is a, a different population and clientele, yes. balancing it into recreation, which is opportunity for everyone and, and kind of meeting people where they're at and providing those opportunities for them. Yeah, meeting, meeting their uh, needs and opportunities and, and, and creating more and more. And, and obviously, you've, you've done that in this town to a great degree. Um, so much so that there was a recent award presented to you at the select board meeting a few weeks ago. How about that? Yeah, I mean, it's 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 always nice. I, I think the nicest part of that is just to hear that the people are satisfied or happy with certain things. It's, it's obviously tough to sit there and hear people wax poetic about you, <laughs> but, uh, you know, greatly appreciated. And, and it originally, um, I think it connected to our Easter egg scramble that we had to do mobile, a mobile version of that last year. And um, it also tied in nicely because... It showed some progress that this year we were able to, just this past weekend, have our egg scramble back on site at the Northampton School where we did small groups coming in and uh, were able to socially distance it that way. And, you know, it, it, through all of this, I really have to say the people have been so great and patient and understanding when we have to make a quick pivot in any direction. And so, yeah, it was very nice to, to be recognized. But as they say, more importantly, it's, it's nice to be a part of a great community who appreciates things going on. Well, not only that, it's, it's your innovation that I, I notice and your quick thought and turnaround on, on situations that bringing things into the town that, uh, that really have benefited. And one of them is the big one called the Wreck at Lafayette. What's the story behind the concept and the operation of it? Yeah, so obviously with COVID going on, um, the use of the school was was out as we headed into the fall season. So suddenly we were left with either not having any programs or finding a way in a site where we could accommodate them. So we started looking and noticing that there were a lot of vacancies throughout town. So we reached out and with the help of Willow Foley, who's a realtor who was also on our recreation commission, we started reaching out to various places where there were space and eventually um, we're able to settle on on the place that, as you mentioned, the wreck at Lafayette Crossing. It's a, a 4,000 foot square space that we can keep it completely open and adjust for whatever programs we have going on. It's been really well received and we've been running programs out of there since the beginning of December. Just a tremendous uh, undertaking. Uh, we had gone over to shoot a little PSA for you I, a couple of months back and it was like a just a massive... Um, just a massive undertaking. Of course, we, we re immediately had the radio control car idea with the the Northampton Grand Prix, but that has never well, come to uh, uh, I have to say, too, it. it's also a good opportunity for me to say thank you to you and your team for all you do because uh, 
besides you know all the meetings, everything that you guys put out for information for the town, we get great feedback on any time we do anything. And you have a lot of listeners, a lot of viewers, and uh, it's just one more way to get information out to people in town, which is always a struggle in a small community. Yeah, yeah, and, and we all recognize the synergy of working together and, and getting that word out and getting more activities into the town. doesn't matter what size the town is. If everyone's informed and you give them your best, I think it's a great deal. Yep. You know, it's been a year of, uh, needless to say, adjustments, uh, alterations, plans, things canceled, but then things moved. Personally, I think we're getting back a little bit here at, the, at a time, a little more confidence with every day. But um, there was so much to do on the other side of your, your, your function, and that, of course, is the PASA program with the... Uh, you know, rethinking the services and events for the for the PASA program, the seniors in town. Uh, can you talk about that a little bit? Sure. So, as you mentioned, I mean that that whole population presents different challenges or different needs that, that they would like to have, and the the luncheons and the activities that we did were just a, a great thing for them to do, and we lost that um, in terms of in person meetings. So we kind of turned it around to you know how can we help? How can we still maintain contact? and so forth. So doing things such as um, providing grocery deliveries in town, which we did a lot of particularly early on you know, last year at this time. And then we said, you know, what what can we do still for event, events? So while the fall weather still managed, we did do a couple of outdoor um, gatherings at the bandstand where we did luncheons. And then as we headed into where it was a little too cold for that, uh, we started doing the mail deliveries to the homes, which we were able to do for the Thanksgiving mail and, and a, a um, Christmas time mail and um, St. Patty's most recently. And we did Valentine treats. In fact, we collaborated with our after school program. The kids put together some Valentine treats for the seniors as well. So just kind of doing that. And, and in ways, we've kind of grown the program because they people who would like that service of having those things delivered. So we've picked up some new members while trying to, again, keep that group together and do whatever we can for the time. Yeah, I, I of course, missed the, um, I truly, truly missed the Thanksgiving dinner here at Town Hall. <laughs> and, of course, the the wonderful smell of the corned beef and cabbage. Mm -hmm. on, on, um, Not to mention a, Joe's always make sure there's plenty of leftovers. Don't we know that? <laughs> yes, yes. So we're, we're always glad to do a podcast on those two days. But anyway... <laughs> So we're going to take a short break, and uh, when we come back, we'll talk about a few more things in the upcoming seasons and, and anything else you want to share. So we're going to break right now for some community notes. We'll be back shortly on Radio Northampton. Welcome back to Radio Northampton. I'm your host, John Savistano, and our very special guest, uh, as we said earlier, that you know, we do have a quiz question because uh, he is our most frequent flyer, if you will, in terms of uh, interviews uh, here on Radio Northampton or in our PSAs. And uh, the question that we want to remind you of was that, well, since Joe has had the most appearances, what about who made the most appearances on the Johnny Garson show? And we'll have that answer for you at the end I've of the show. I've been thinking about that, too. I think yeah. I have a pretty good guess. Okay. All right. Good. We'll hold that A contender, now. if nothing else. <laughs> yeah, there are one or two that come to mind. People go, right, well, they probably, I'll tell you what. I, I know, obviously I know the answer, but I know who the second person was as well, who you would have thought was the first, but mm -hmm. we'll, we'll, we'll deal with that later on. Joe, um, looking ahead, uh, we are in spring. Finally, snow's gone and such. Um, you promised so we, we, that, correct? We, yeah, we, we pushed Winterfest right out of the okay. door. Uh, we never got to use the remote control Zamboni on the skating ring, but that's okay. Um, spring activities, things going on for the spring season. Can you fill us in on that? Sure. Well, like we say, we hope um, we definitely are in spring. It does seem to be early this year. Um, so starting with just being able to use, as we mentioned in the previous segment about um, the, the egg scramble on the school grounds. I mean, there'd be years where you couldn't do that because unless you're throwing the eggs, uh, the bunny, putting them right in the snow, uh, it's yeah. not going to work. So you know, hopefully the, the, the weather stays good. So Dearborn Park, 
Um, tennis nets are up, tennis courts are open. We um, actually have um, started practice each day for the St. Thomas comes down and they rent our courts uh, for after school tennis there. But tennis programs are going on. Coach Moulton was down there this past weekend. Uh, the playgrounds opened up. We still have um, a lot of spring projects that we're doing down at Dearborn again to get that together, but, but that, that's certainly happening. The other big part of the spring is to think summer as much as you can. We are going to be back with summer camp nine weeks starting June 28th. We're back on the grounds, primarily an outdoor camp again during these, these COVID times, but we do, we are the grounds of the Northampton School and can use the gym as necessary in the indoors. Um, and, and something to that, last year, a lot of communities didn't offer summer camp, understandable with all the, the guidelines and uncertainty around that put into place. And we did hold it, and uh, we were very fortunate. Things went very successfully, and, and we had a fun time. So we, we think we have a good system down for that. We hope this year it's going to be even a little bit easier to do so. The new guidance allows us to have larger groups. So we're looking for a great summer camp, but this is the time to, to register for that, to get your summer camp membership. Again, all our programs at Northampton, nh.recdesk.com to get involved in that. So that, that's a really big part of our spring. But um, as far as current programs going on, we, back at, at the rec, we do an after-school program every day. And right now for the spring, so we can take advantage of, of the weather as it's good, we are running a straight we call after-school clubhouse, which is just a variety of our indoor and outdoor activities. So every, every school day in April will be there. We'll also have activities for the April vacation camp. Um, some of our stuff we release later than we used to, just again, so that we can make sure we're, we're not in any um, crisis regarding COVID or anything like that. So that's going on. Um, adult programs at the rec, the yoga classes have been very popular. Um, Marisa Granger from Soulfire has been running a, a Float and Nidra yoga class on Monday nights. That continues on. Uh, we're also adding some morning um, yoga classes with again with um, Soul Fire, and those will be on Tuesdays and Thursday mornings at the Rec in April. We have a repeat of our yoga and music class, again with Marisa, that'll be on a Friday night, uh, April 16th. That, those, these are all been sold out classes um, leading up to this time, so really good. We have a brand new class, uh, Cardio Jam with Adrian, including a free trial class on Wednesday, April 7th. So you can come down as well, John, it's, uh, and get your jam on um, with Adrian. We'd love to see you there. And then it will be a regular class It'll after be that. more like jelly than, than <laughs> jam. <laughs> um, and, of course, we mentioned the, the different after-school clubhouse programs. We also are starting a cheerleading program. Um, as this airs, this coming Thursday, the first Thursday in April, we'll be um, doing a cheerleading program. And registrations are underway for our 2021 adult co-ed softball season, which will start uh, later on in June. Again, we had a great year last year with the COVID guidelines in place. So uh, looking forward to that. So, um, yeah, that's that's kind of where we're at right now with everything spring-wise. Yeah, you know, the old saying, hope spring's eternal, but also the fact that it's a year later where we're all either vaccinated or have – you know, different guidelines and, and a reopening and such like that. So uh, that, that lends itself to a, a great spring and uh, and summer. A common line I, I like to say regarding like the COVID and things that we have to do is I try to flip the script a little bit and say, okay, so if we do X, Y, Z, we get to do these programs. So that's kind of the way we look at right. it. If whether it's the kids have to wear a mask or, or whatever it is, Doing those things allows us to do the programs, and so we're doing programs. Right, yeah, exactly. Anything else you want to share with us, Joe? Um, no, I, like I say, I, I just encourage everybody to go to that site because you could scroll all the program flyers as well as register for anything at Northampton nh.recdesk.com and as always, we welcome everyone's feedback and questions and comments, and that helps us direct what we're doing next. Yeah, great. As usual, our frequent flyer with most of the info that we need to know to to keep the town uh, moving, hopping, running, and et cetera. We want to thank you for joining us again. And before we go, your guess, 
as to who made the most appearances on the Johnny Carson show. Okay, and since you didn't say guest host, you didn't see, you just said appearances. appearances so I'm, yeah. I'm taking that into account. I'm going to go, maybe it's a long shot, but I'm going to go with David Brenner. David Brenner. Good choice, but that wasn't it. Okay. Uh, we'll put it on the screen at home, too. But uh, the, the most appearances on the Johnny Carson show, 177 with Joey Bishop. Oh, I was thinking Buddy Hackett for a moment or two as well. Well, you know, but... that, that whole group, you know, sure. they're, they're, they're always just on. Just come and sit like on the couch and smoke cigarettes and talk all night with them. All know? right, what would be your second guess just off the off the wall? Oh, boy. Um, hmm, I, I gave you my, my other one. Uh, Joan Rivers. You got it, 97. Whoa. And, of Very course, good. she eventually wound up doing a lot of hosting and hosting then took her own and, show yeah. and then she was dead to him at yeah, that point. Yeah. <laughs> I can't tell you who filled in for Ed or Doc, but at least Joey Johnny Carson yeah. had it was by Joey Bishop who uh at least was uh, making all the appearances. Joey, we want to thank you as usual for all you do. Uh we don't have an award for you because the other award I guess speaks for itself. Thank uh, you. You're uh, you're a um credit to the community and um, we just enjoy the, the things that are coming. They're always going on, happening. And uh, what we enjoy here at uh, Raider Northampton and Channel 22 is that you are a one-take wonder, especially when we do our PSAs and stuff like that. So it might not uh, be pretty, but it'll be one take. Hey, listen, it works. It works all the way around. Joe, thanks again for Thank joining you. us. And we'll see you next time on Radio Northampton. 